Cantabrians are flocking to what's confidently predicted to become the biggest party in the South Island tonight. The venue is Hagley Park in Christchurch, and our reporter on the spot there is Leanne Duncan. Leanne, good evening. So how big is your party going to be? Well, big, Carol, we're expecting about 125,000 people here tonight. If we get that number, which the coordinators fully expect we will, it'll be the largest single event ever to be staged in the South Island. Coordinators say there are 130 performers waiting to perform for us tonight, so there's bound to be something for everyone. In the Park 2000's headline act, warming up to thrill the fans. Kiwi rocker Dave Dobbin happy to be in Christchurch for the big night. It's great because I've spent a lot of time here. When I first started playing, I was playing down here with the dudes. We used to fill up pubs around the place and built up a really good live audience. So I've got quite an affection for the place. Dobbin's one of about 130 performers in the show, which will also include a 20-minute long fireworks display. He's the ones yeah, that go up and go boom. Sort of that. And come the dawn, Christchurch's focus will shift to New Brighton, where it's hoped they'll greet the rising sun with a brand new song. I can see a new sunrise. But the festivities won't end with the sunrise for Cantabrians. The year 2000 is Canterbury's 150th anniversary, so this is the first event of our year of celebrations. Last night, the Littleton Time Ball rehearsed its midnight act. The first in the world to drop to mark the new millennium. But it's revellers dropping by the wayside that's got Christchurch Hospital worried. It's converted a car park into a special medical unit. If you're not seriously unwell, try and avoid coming to the hospital. We have this medical facility where people can be assessed and try and come to a place like this or to the after hour surgery. But for most Cantabrians, it's hoped tonight will be a happy one. Ooh, yeah. Happy New Year. Well, Leanne, some unusual security measures are in force there to ensure a happy start to the new year. That's exactly right. They've taken the rather unique uh, approach of splitting Hadley Park completely down the middle into drinkers on one side, non-drinkers on the other. Because what happened was, originally the police wanted to have the park completely alcohol-free. And the co coordinators thought, well, it doesn't sound like very much fun. So they came to an arrangement where they would split it in half. And um, so that's exactly what they've done here. Now, what they've done too is the demarcations between the two areas are movable. So if it ends up towards the end of the, end of the night, there are more drinkers than non-drinkers, which I suppose they're probably will be, then they can move them too to create more space. Are police really going to be able to keep the drinkers and non-drinkers apart, Leanne? Very big question there too. Uh, Hackley Park is a big area with no defined exits and, 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 and entrances. But what it has done is it's given the police the power to confiscate uh, large amounts of alcohol if people are in the wrong place or they're creating trouble, that sort of thing. So they are able to do that. At the moment it is quite quiet here so there aren't any problems but I guess we'll just have to see how well the police can handle it uh, later on into the evening, particularly towards midnight. Leanne Duncan from Hagley Park in Christchurch. Thank you. Further south in Dunedin, they're going for a Y2K proof millennium celebration in the Octagon with attention centering on the city's hand-wound clock. Dunedin will have the first town hall clock in the world to herald the year 2000. A final wind-up this century for the old town hall clock. As the millennium ticks over at midnight, all eyes in Dunedin will be on the 120-year-old timepiece. Never misses a beat. No chance of any Y2K bugs upsetting this celebration. Well, if Dunedin had been doing this a century ago, it would have been exactly the same as it is tonight. One change, weddings are now legal at any hour, thanks to marriage celebrant Ellen McDonald's personal campaign to change the law. We live in the age of choice, and uh, it just irked me that there should be this silly little law dating back to 1920 that stopped people from doing that. Bed bugs won't bite this Dunedin couple, they're getting married at the crack of dawn. Just up the road in East Otago, they're claiming the discovery of the little critter that could cause mayhem in the morning. People think that it only likes high technology, but we've discovered that in actual fact it prefers rural life. A promotional gimmick today that everyone hopes won't pop up for real tomorrow. Michael Turner, 3 News. Central Otago's the traditional New Year's Eve meeting place for thousands of partygoers, but in Queenstown the smiles are a little forced this year. After putting the disastrous November floods behind them, the locals are now having to cope with a flood of visitors. 
With just four ATM machines in the whole of Queenstown, endless queuing for cash is trying the patience of both locals and tourists. Oh, it's been shocking, mate. It's been crying. Bit of a hassle, mate, yeah. But I just hope there's enough left by the time I get there. I don't trust banks, especially the Australian ones. The November floods wrecked havoc for some waterfront businesses, some still closed. And for banks, six ATM machines were put out of action and they won't be repaired until late January. The influx of visitors and Y2K concerns putting intense pressure on the bank's resources. A lot of people are withdrawing, say, a couple of two or three days money, you know, in case something does happen. That's, that's fine. Um, but we're well prepared for our businesses and our personal customers. How long to go now? About... And pressure too on police resources, coming from youths already into some serious celebrating. The night before last we had a huge amount of problem that sort of took us by surprise to some extent. Uh, but the night shift guys caught with it and a few fellows hit the cells. Some campsites in the area are employing security guards to keep a close eye on their guests. Add alcohol and you get assholes. For the sturdy souls who began drinking at 10 o'clock this morning, it promises to be a long day and a much longer night. <laughs> Michael Barron, <laughs> 3 News. More than a million Sydney siders have begun cramming the harbour side for a huge fireworks display, but authorities are trying to keep them away. They're being told not to attend the event, but stay at home and watch it on television. Sydney's big show promises everything from dancing abseilers, flying musicians, colourful crabs, and at midnight, the century's biggest fireworks display. This is your opportunity for a great big wide shot. I don't know how you're going to get it all in, but... Um, the world's right. media can't wait. Okay. Sydney has gone to extraordinary lengths to prepare for the I'm impressed. <laughs> and locals have begun a land grab as tent towns spring up around the harbour. It's uh, going to be a long <laughs> evening. We had to come early to get the spot. But many people are staying home, turned off by the threat of hordes of drunken revellers and transport worries. And even the New South Wales state government is telling families to stay away, warning it'll be too crowded for children. The harbour's turning into a giant raft as hundreds of boats secure the best moorings. Water police promising a crackdown on drunken sailors. As for the weather, it's a holiday washout, essential millennium attire and umbrella. The fireworks go ahead in the rain, the lantern barges go ahead in the rain, and the parties will go ahead in the rain. That may leave Mother Nature to put on the most spectacular fireworks of all. Steve Christensen, Sydney 3 News. The centrepiece of Britain's Millennium celebrations has collapsed in an embarrassing failure. The London Millennium Wheel, the city's new symbol, won't be ready on time for tonight. The London Eye, the world's largest Ferris wheel, failed a vital safety check and has been declared unsafe for passengers. It won't be able to carry official guests on New Year's Eve as planned, although the British Prime Minister will start it turning. The wheel won't now be able to take passengers until mid-January, a major embarrassment for its main sponsor, British Airways. Now, here's Clint with Sport and the winning feeling for the Black Cats. Yes, they'd like that to continue into the new millennium as well. Also coming up, the Pakistanis defend their strike bowler. And Keith Hobb getting ready to race into history and the new century.